Well, the passion of those debates we've just had remind me of six years ago and the Brexit referendum campaign. And it's six years ago to the day that I was on the river behind me, the Thames, being shouted at by Bob Geldof through a very loud microphone. It's all enough to make you think it really is that time of the day. And it's time for Talking Pints. And Carla Wellen, delighted that you're here to join me Cheers. this evening. Pleasure. Thank you. Now, we've not met before. No. But I have seen you in action before. Because I was in the grandstand at Aintree in 1992, watching the Grand National, and I did have a bet on a horse. And you were riding that horse that day, weren't you? Yeah, must have, well, if it won. Party politics. <laughs> yeah. well, I had to put money on a horse called yeah, well, party would, politics. Yeah. yeah, a long time ago now, 30 years. It's a long mm. time ago. But you had two Grand National winners, Scottish Grand National, Welsh Grand National. What was it that made you good? At, at, at steeplechase racing, dangerous steeplechase racing. I think most most jockeys would say that they were on the right horse on the, on the on the right day, when conditions were right and the horse was in great form, and luckily enough didn't make a, a mess of it. Um, so you know you've got to get the right horse. You, if the horse does most of the work, and without the horse having loads of ability, you've got no chance. No matter how good you are. So you've got to have a good horse. Yeah, yeah. I mean that makes sense. And mm. we were talking the other week about uh, about Lester Piggott and how you know he'd go to Newmarket and spot the horse yeah. that he wanted to ride in the Derby on, and, and, and other jockeys would perhaps be a bit cheesed off that Leicester had, 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 had sort of nicked the ride. But I was saying before you came in that actually the racing calendar is a big part of our year. The National Hunt Festivals, the flat season. This week it's Royal Ascot. It's the first proper Royal Ascot since the pandemic, since lockdown. Vast crowds of people uh, flocking there. Uh, do you think racing is as important in our lives as it was 30 years ago? Um, I think that other sports have developed. And so um, I think the, the world is getting, getting smaller place. So I think people can travel more and see other sports as well. So maybe it isn't quite as as, as um as big as it was, yeah. it's still it's still massive. It's still big, yeah, and it's big all over the world, isn't it? As yeah. well, and crowds, you know, massive crowds all the time, especially at, at the big meetings. It's fantastic, like Cheltenham, Aintree, and, and Ascot this week. You know, fantastic, sold out. I was at Cheltenham this year. I went on the Friday. I went on Gold Cup Day, and uh, hey, there's a female jockey doing very well mm. in jump racing. Rachel is doing incredibly well. I was there on the Friday at Cheltenham. It was magnificent. I mean. A full house, the organisation, everything about it was absolutely phenomenal. And you go to those big events and it feels like racing is healthy. The smaller events, perhaps it's much, much more difficult. But there was one thing, there was one thing at Cheltenham that really made me think. And I get it. I understand that these horses are bred to be jumping horses, that they wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for the racing or point-to-pointing or whatever it yeah. may be. And it kind of is point-to-pointing that is the kind of the nursery, isn't it, really? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. For, yeah. for, for National Hunt Racing. So I get, I get all of that and I understand all of that. And I hadn't been to Cheltenham. I hadn't been to the festival for quite a number of years. I've been quite busy with other things. Um, and it was interesting. As we arrived, there were a number, not huge, but a number of people there protesting giving out leaflets and you know you can say well it's the animal rights brigade it's the anti-hunt lot it's the we want to ban fishing lot it's the we want to ban everything lot but they didn't quite strike me as being that they didn't, didn't quite strike me as being i mean there is a very extreme element mm. of the animal of, of, of the animal rights movement these people didn't quite strike me as that and i've talked about this with some younger people people, you know, youngsters who like riding horses. And what I saw on that day at Cheltenham, you know, the couple of horses had very bad falls. It happens. They get put down. Do you worry? I mean, let's face it. We're a country that has banned fox hunting. We're a country with a government that has brought in all sorts of animal welfare Legislation. One of Boris's big claims at the minute, he's going to ban trophies from Africa being imported back into the country. Do you think jump racing has got a real problem with this? And, and the fact that a certain number of horses every year get put down. Where do we go with this? Um, I don't think it's a real problem. As you say, there are thousands of horses bred for racing. Mm -hmm. um, and they're looked after so well. You know, it's, 
it's in every owner and trainer's interest to have the horse in the best health and fitness and, and condition to race. So they get the best, the, the best food, you know, um, the best hay and the best... So they're well looked after. Oh, fantastic. And vets and mm. all the rest of it. And they worked hard. Yeah, so it's, it's a high quality of life they get. They get, you know, they, they, they're, they, they're looked after so well. And I'm afraid some of them do pay with their lives. But for the, for the, for the thousands and thousands that have a fantastic life and a, and a fantastic retirement, um, there is a percentage that, you know, sadly lose their life. But, um, you know, we think that's, a, a, that's fair enough. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's sad, but uh, compared to the thousands who have a fantastic life, which they wouldn't have any life without being bred for racing, um, it's probably, you know, um, it's, just a, it's just something that happens in the sport and it, 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 you know, I don't think you can rule it out altogether without, you know, ev ev there's danger in everything, isn't there? There is danger in everything. No, um, that is absolutely you know, right. How far do you go? But yeah. it happens, you know, the big festivals, the National, Cheltenham, you know, we see several horses every year between both, well, it depends on the going a little bit. Yeah. Several horses eat. But do you, I mean, I, I'm just saying to you as somebody, you know, who spent his life in that industry, that I do sense there is a growing movement of people that would like to effectively ban jump racing, and it worries me. Yeah, I think it's the world we're in now, isn't it? More and more people, you know, um, put a, a concern about things like that. You know, years ago, no one really they let everyone get on with their well, own more and bit, more didn't people, they? More and more people want to dictate Carl, yeah, and more how people. you should live your life, or yeah. I, should live more, I should live my life, um, you know, whether it's the, the new legislation that you want to... You won't ever be, able, ever be able to buy a cigarette if you're born after a certain year. Or, I mean, you know, I sense from your answer that there's something in you that's a bit more libertarian. Yeah, um, more and more people in every walk of life get offended by, you know, things that years ago no one would even cared about. They wouldn't even spoke, uh, had a conversation about things. And, and now people are getting offended by it and think that it's wrong. Um, so, you know, how far do we go? Do we, you know, loads of animals, you know, suffer. Dogs, where do you go? Do you not let them run around the park in case they hurt themselves? You know, it, it goes on, doesn't it? And it's just bit by bit um, bowing to people. Where do we end up? Um, yeah, and it's the same with what we can say to each other and how we can behave. I very mean, much so, I yeah. mean, you know, are you yeah. easily offended? Do, no, you, do, no. do you need your safe space? <laughs> not at all. I, I, I don't, no, I, it doesn't matter. No, and you can, people have their opinion. And you'd have to fall out because you disagree with someone, do you? Um, but I, more, don't, I don't think you do. No, but no. More, people, more and more people do think like that. that you know, that if they don't, if they don't um, like what someone said, they, they're offended and they, and they fall out. I don't get it. Just so life, when you, life's too short. So, well, I agree with that, but an increasing number of people do take offence at virtually anything. So there you are. You know, it's the national. It's one of the big races, and you're there, and you're getting ready. What's the banter like between the jockeys? Because you're competing with each other for fame and fortune, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite unique, because you're in a, 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 the changing rooms beforehand with all your opposition. Mm. But you actually get, it, you get on, and the atmosphere, and the... the it's as if you're in a, in a team because you get on so well. You see each other every day, and you're, you've got the same. You're like-minded. You like the adrenaline, and you know you obviously like love horses. Um, so it's like you're in a team, and then you go out and you're in direct competition, and you'll you know do as much as you can to to um, to beat the others. But you come in and you congratulate the winner, and you know the lads who maybe had a fall and hurt themselves. You, you, everyone will check see if they're okay, and they'll help them if they need help. And, Get them to so there's a fair bit of teamwork, a fair bit of camaraderie there. It's though. massive. It's, it's very strange because, you know, it's as if you're in a really tight-knit team. Yeah. And then you go out and you're totally against each other, opposition, come back in and you're a team again. You know, we all look after each other and, you know, make sure they're okay, take them to hospital, wait well, for hours I mean, for, for I mean, x-rays. I mean, jump yeah. racing. I mean, crikey. You know, when I, when I go and watch jump racing and I see a jockey come off and the horses come and I think, oh, I can barely watch it. I mean, it's got to be pretty scary when you hit the ground, isn't it? No, you haven't got time to think about it, but um, it's what you're used to. You know, I mean, I wouldn't want to be jumping off a cliff and, or, 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 you know, skydiving and things like that. It's what you're used to, isn't it? So what injuries did you sustain? Oh, God, I broke so much. So I, I obviously it wasn't that good because I broke, I broke loads of legs and back and collarbones and arms and dislocated elbows and just loads of stuff so I obviously wasn't that good because I, I fell off too much well you had some big wins yeah I got a few lucky ones along the way yeah, yeah. but I mean the sheer 
body damage that jockeys put themselves through. Yeah, but you know, when you're young, you don't think of that, do you? I mean, now I realise <laughs> I probably wish I'd have fallen off so much. But at the time, you're young and you just think you know, it's a great adrenaline rush and, and it's a great buzz. And you know, you can't when you retire. You that's something mm. that everyone misses. And loads of sportsmen, you know, when they miss the adrenaline, don't they, of, of sport and competition of and winning? Of course, of and, course, um, and being in the limelight and, and and the attention and all of it. Yeah. But you, I mean, you went on to be a trainer, um, but you're now helping and coaching young jockeys. And I'm just interested. You know, is the training different? Is the diet different? How are how are young jockeys today in uh, racing competitive? Massively more dedicated. You know, in all sports, we've come on. Um, the, the nutrition side is, you know, we, we just used to eat badly, you know, um, and, and starve yourself. If you need to lose weight, you'd starve yourself and this sort of thing. Um, so you'd, you'd ride dehydrated a lot of the time and this sort of thing. A lot of the, I wasn't, I, I wasn't um, too bad with weight, but a lot of lads who are, much, who are bigger than me, you know, they'd be very dehydrated riding, which in turn isn't good for, your, for taking falls when you're dehydrated. You, it, it's been proven you do so more damage. So what would be a good weight for a jump jockey? Nine seven nine nine. That's a great weight. You know, you, you, you could eat sensibly then. Um, but nutrition's improved. Recovery from injuries. I mean, they've, they've got some set, three centres around the country now where specialists. Where you've got a, a team of people who can look after you and physios and rehabilitation and some fantastic things that um, the Injured Jockeys Fund, which is a fantastic um, organisation, um, um, have, have, have built and set up. And they're running now. You know, it's a very expensive thing, but. Jo the, the treatment jockey get, jockeys get now is so much so much better than it was. The medical treatment they get. Yeah, we, we're to look after ourselves basically, um, and um, and again coaching, you know, there was no coaches in our days. You just got a, got, got well done if you did well, and, and something else if you didn't. Um, because now there's you know you can analyse it more, and obviously television helps, and you got easy access to replays and things like that. And, you can, and psychology you can, does that come into it as well? There yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, there's, you can, you can. There's sports psychologists you can see as well, and it's all just a phone call away. So all that's improved so much. You know, it, it needed to, but um, yeah, we're catching up on other sports, so it's great. When you look at the flat, you know, obviously Ascot this week and the Derby a couple of weeks ago. Do you follow the flat and go to flat meetings as well, or are you just a jump jockey? Uh, no, I, I follow the flat a little bit, yeah, just a bit. Um, I normally go to Ascot, I'm not going this week, but um, yeah, I, lo I love Ascot. I mean, the atmosphere is just fantastic, and that's what everyone loves, just the um, just being there amongst you know, all them people, and it's fantastic. But completely dominated by Arab money, isn't it? A lot of it is, yeah, 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 a lot of it is. But yeah, that's, that's where it is, yeah. Where's the British money for racing? I mean, the flat wouldn't have survived without Arab money, would it? Um, it would probably would survive, but in a different form. Um, you know, a lot of people might say they'd be better without it. I wouldn't say that, but you know, there'd be a lot more people would be interested, maybe. But j jumping wise, it's 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 you know, not much um, of that sort of money in it. No. And a final thought: here we are. Inflation is back at you know heading for double digits. The government's in trouble. It all feels a bit like the 1970s in some ways with all the things that are going on. How do you feel at the sort of state of the country is and, and where are we going as a nation? Mm, it's worrying, isn't it? Um, yeah, well, I think we're probably going the wrong way, I'd say. <laughs> well, I think that's probably I think, right. I think we should change direction. But, um, yeah, yeah well, I think on that note, we'll get back to our beer. Carl, okay. thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Cheers. Do you want to be on Talking Pints? Cheers.